Hello and good evening and welcome again to another Just Land Rovers video. It's Technical Tuesday again. This one is a bit of a less, bit less of a technical video. So, uh, warning, prior warning, uh, there is no picoscope in this video. Uh, there is a thermal camera, which is pretty cool, uh, and some information on just how connected cars are these days, as in how one system may influence another system directly or indirectly in this case directly and it's uh, an intention or it's the way the system works it's designed to work that way it's just odd the way it works and the way that these systems are linked together so the car itself is a discovery 3 from 2005 so this isn't even really a, a modern car as such it's 18 years old now <coughs> uh, more modern cars have got even more communications channels, even more communi like higher communication speed. So on these cars, on Discovery 3 anyway, this one in 2005, even then it's got I think six different uh, communications networks. Um, some of them are similar, um, but it, those six at least are high speed CAN, uh, a medium speed CAN bus, uh, the MOST ring or media oriented systems transport, um, a, what they call a GVIF, um, which is just for video, um, a LIN bus, a local interconnect network, and then a really a private network on the security system, a, a security LIN bus. Um, those are six systems that all talk primarily on their own wires. Some of those are twin wire systems, the CAN buses, for example. Um, the MOST ring is a fiber optic ring. Uh, the LIN bus is single wire only. Um, all those networks are all communicating with with one module, another module, another module all the time. Those are the, the modules use those systems to communicate with each other. Um, this one, this video actually, we're going to talk about, believe it or not, heated seats and how uh, this ridiculous car that came in today, um, or this ridiculous fault that came in today, um, how that panned out. So the car came in, uh, the heated seats weren't working. That's all we knew, heated seats weren't working. Um, they had worked at some point in the past. Uh, they no longer worked. That's all we've got. Um, so initially we look at the car, uh, we plug Autologic in, um, from that we can see that, oh sorry, first of all actually you just turn the switch on, turn the heated seats on, uh, see what happens. Um, what's meant to happen is you have two LEDs on each switch, um, you press it once you get two lights on, that's for maximum heating, press it again you get a medium kind of heating, uh, press it again it turns off. Um, so press those buttons, the lights lit up as they should, went off as they should. Um, what else can we do? So as I say, we plug Autologic in. Uh, on that, you can see the the state that each switch is at, uh, and obviously that is kind of backed up by the fact the lights come on and go off as they should. Um, you can see the current that each heated seat, that's left and right front heated seats, and um, the current that they're drawing each. Um, on this one, if you turn the, turn the heated seats on, uh, initially they drew about eight amps, um, which is about right approximately about right for those circuits. Um, the fact that they are drawing current proves to us that uh, the fuses are good. Um, there's three fuses in that system, one for each heated seat. So a left fuse, a right fuse, if you like, they're both 25 amp fuses. Um, which is about right again, if we, if we were seeing a maximum of, around, let's say around about eight amps as we were getting, eight to 10 amps on, on a fuse system of 25 amps, uh, that's about right. You, you roughly times your your current draw by three, and that's your fused amperage, amperage, approximately. Uh, it's not like we were getting a current draw of twenty three amps on a 20, 25 amp fused circuit. There'd be something wrong there. Um, so that all looked okay. Uh, the other fuse on the system is just for the control module. Uh, that was okay as well. Um, so fuses are fine. The system seems to work. We get current draw. Um, that's a good indication that at some point the system is working. Uh, after about five seconds, however, the, the seat's turned off. Um, at that point, we got a little confused. So why is the system turning off? Uh, the lights themselves on the switches stayed on, uh, but the current draw went to zero. So um, there's a couple of reasons perhaps that could happen. If, if there was uh, an open circuit in a system, first of all, we wouldn't get any current draw. If we had a short circuit, we would get a current draw, but we would expect it to be higher. Um, but with that in mind, um, the current draw wasn't that high, uh, but if the current draw was too high uh, and the module saw the current draw was too high, it could potentially shut the system off to protect itself. 
Um, as it turned out, that was not the case either. Um, there's a couple of videos ago of this, mostly after we'd found the fix. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about how the system works. So the system, or rather the heated seat system, the heated seat system, part of the climate control system, uh, the HVAC or heated heating, ventilation, air conditioning system, the or climate control system, if you like, that that system uh, it, it controls a lot of things from the HVAC system. That is that controls everything from your heated windscreens to heated seats to heat coming out of the air vents, anything or the aircon, anything to do with heating, ventilation, or aircon. You got it. It's all in that one thing. HVAC, HVAC system. Um, part of that is a heated seat. Uh, subsystem if you like um, so that system when you turn the seats on it looks at a number of different inputs have you turned the seats on um, how hot is the seat that's each of into each individual front seat has got its own temperature sensor to see how hot the element has got the seat already um, it looks at the temperature inside the car it looks at the temperature outside the car uh, it looks at a, a lot of different things and it will heat up the seat each individual seat um, depending on how of how it how it interprets those other dynamics, for example, if the interior temperature was already really was really cold, for example, um, it will heat up the seat. Yeah, but it won't really heat it up as much as if the exterior temperature was quite hot. It wouldn't need to. Why would it? Um, you, it generally, at least from what we've seen, it will try to make the the seat temperature about twenty degrees higher than the interior temperature of the car. Um, and we were getting an interior temperature, you can, we could see this in auto, Autologic, of about 15 degrees today. Uh, and the heated seats started off at 15 degrees. Um, if we sat in the driver's seat, you could actually see that temperature rising, um, which gives us another information that, that shows us that the temperature centre in the seat is giving us reasonable values. That's not unheard of. Um, if we turn the heated seats on, like I said, they drew about 8 amps uh, and then turned off. Um, but with us sitting in the driver's seat, obviously that was raising that temperature automatically or through our bum heat. Uh, the passenger seat should not heat up unless it is provided with some kind of heat seat heating. Um, uh, but uh, within eight seconds, there's not a lot of heating going to go on. So if we turn the system on, uh, let that eight seconds, let, let that eight amps, sorry, um, get drawn, it'll turn itself off. If we turn it off, then turn it back on again. It'll do that eight amps again for about five seconds. After about 15 seconds, we started to see a rise in that seat temperature as well. Um, so that proves to us that that seat temperature, also that seat temperature sensor uh, was working. That's both seat temperature seat, seat temperature sensors uh, were working fine. Um, we also got the thermal camera on it just to, just to prove that they were working. And yeah, you could see each seat was heating up. Um, just to prove that not only were we seeing a, the sensors were increasing in temperature, but the seat itself was increasing in temperature. Um, so that proves the, the system itself is intact. Um, the system works, the the seat heat, the heated seat elements are intact. There's not a short in the system, it's not open circuit, there's no um there's no break in the system if you like. Uh, so we've got to start looking at inputs into the system. Why would this system try and shut itself off? Uh, when effectively when it shouldn't do. Um, and this is a, a ridiculous thing really. So you look at the interior temperature, uh, that was about right. The exterior temperature, that was about right. Um, we look at coolant temperature sensor, that's another thing it looks at. Yeah, other things it looks at. And the last thing that we looked at, obviously coolant temperature sensor, that's not actually logged in the um, climate control module in the, HVAC, in the HVAC system. That's logged in the engine control module. As we were looking at that, engine control module information, we saw that what the engine control module was seeing as a date, as a value for intake air temperature. So that's not the temperature of the air outside the car, it's the temperature of the air being drawn into the engine, um, which is a different, uh, a different sensor and a different, um, a different reading. Effectively, you could have colder air getting drawn in and outside the car, you could have warmer air getting drawn in, and it needs to know the, the temperature of the air going into the engine to run the engine properly. Not necessarily the temperature outside the car, uh, but the temperature of the air going into the engine, which is potentially very, very similar to the air temperature outside the car, but it's a specific temperature for a specific reason. Uh, it needs to know the temperature of the air to calculate the density, therefore the amount of oxygen in the air, therefore how much diesel to add to get good combustion. And uh, we saw that that intake air temperature sensor was reading minus 40 
Celsius. So really cold. That's actually, that's actually the, the, the default um, minimum for the system, if you like. Um, so obviously there's a problem there. Uh, and we went looking at that centre because at the same time as looking at intake air temperature, which was minus 40 degrees, we saw that the mass airflow or the amount of air getting sensed being drawn into the engine um, was also, well, well, that was zero, which is what the sensor would read if, if there was a fault with it. Um, so we opened the bonnet, had a quick look at that sensor, the math sensor, uh, the manifold, sorry, the mass air flow sensor, which as it happens also houses the intake air temperature sensor. That one unit uh, is actually two sensors. It measures the amount of air going in and the temperature that that air is. Oh, sorry, it measures the volume of air going in and the temperature of the air. And from there, it can calculate the density and therefore how much oxygen is in that air or how much burnable air, burnable gas is in that air. Um, so yeah, if we look at that sensor, uh, we found that the connector was actually missing. It, it was off, it was dangling down in the engine bay. Um, that gave us a minus, a, a default minus 40 and a zero, and a zero um, grams per second reading. Quite amusing, plug that back in and guess what? The heated seats start working. Um, if we have a quick look at AutoLogic here, you can see that um, the left hand, uh, left hand one is drawing some current. It's drawing about eight amps, um, and then it actually switches off right before I move. Just catch that. Um, but you can see both switches are on. And if you go back to AutoLogic, you can see that the left hand seat is now off. The right hand seat is now off as well. But both seat temperatures are about 38, 39, 40 degrees. Um, so that's how it regulates temperature. It regulates seat temperature by turning them on and off. Um, and there you go, a little video. You can actually see the heat in the seats. Uh, you can see where the elements run in the seat the, the, as it passes current through those wires embedded within the seat. Uh, they get hot and that's what heats you up when you're in a car. Um, that's it really. The math sensor, including the intake air temperature sensor and not being plugged in. Don't know why, uh, this, the connector was good, it's not like it had fallen off. And um, that math sensor had been disconnected and that had stopped the heated seats working. That's our technical Tuesday. Goodbye for now.